so much for being here. The energy in this room is amazing already, and we've not even begun this great day. I'm Bobby Martell. I'm the coordinator for the teacher education program here at Hayward, and I am so honored to be part of this team today where we can just celebrate this great profession. You notice my hair, white is the new in color, is what I heard. I started, oh, don't do the math, but I started teaching in 1974. Oh, pioneer days, right? But before that, I became a teacher, I think when I was six, and I lined up all of my dolls in my room that I could pretend that I was running my own classroom. I have taught kindergarten for 30 years and then grew up and came to the university level. And I love teaching today as much as I did when I began in 1974. I'm still learning. I learned from great colleagues. I do have a song for everything. As you've noted from the beginning of this meeting, my poor team has to hear me sing all the time. And that's okay because how do we really embrace the teaching profession because we love it and we have fun. And how do we energize our future teachers by singing to them, by embracing them and telling them you can do it. And I'm just so honored today and thankful for the great leadership of George Carroll from University of Phoenix. An amazing cheerleader for our profession. And if you think about it, and I say this all the time, those great athletes who are paid millions of dollars, they had a good teacher along the way. And so today we are here to celebrate the teaching profession, to really energize you, this great group sitting in this room who've decided I can change the world and we can do it together. So thank you. Thank you to all of our partners for being here. And thank you to you. Give yourselves a big hug as we begin this day. And thank you. I always, my agenda is over here. So I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Deb, as we know her well, to be able to do a wonderful greeting. Aloha. Aloha. What an incredible group we have this morning. We are so honored to have our wonderful teachers and we're so, so pleased to have you folks. We are here for three specific reasons. Number one, to celebrate this profession. Give it a hand, please. Teaching is fabulous. As I was driving up here today, I was thinking about all of the incredible teachers who have touched my life and I know everyone has a story about the teacher who really made an impact. And so, hopefully, how many people are subs here? Okay, so that's our second reason for being in this room, besides celebrating the profession. Our second reason is to get you folks, anybody who wants to be a teacher, you have a one-stop shop here. There are all the teacher prep programs in the beautiful state of Hawaii, and you have the opportunity to find a program that works for you, to become certified so you can fix the problem of a teacher shortage here in the islands and you can make the difference just as that teacher made a difference in your life. The third reason we're here, there are some incredible PD, professional development opportunities for everyone, whether you're a long-term sub, whether you're an EA, whether you're a certified teacher, you will learn from some of the best this morning. Luckily for you, I have no songs to sing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, really, that's a very good point. Um, although I do come from a high school English background, any high school English teachers here? Oh, just one, Joe, yay, Joe. You all have the opportunity to learn a lot this morning, and please take some time to network with your peers to speak to these fabulous people who are donating their time, and we'll give you information on how to be certified. So without further ado, thank you so much for coming, and I'd like to welcome Barbara Creed from the DOE. start out by thanking everybody who was here today and everybody who had a, a part in making this event possible. Um, we at the Department of Education appreciate everything that every single one of you does for the DOE. 
Uh, it's really interesting and impressive that there's so many substitute teachers here. I believe we have some educational assistants here, others who already work for the DOE in various capacities. And it is so critical and we value you so much. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we are here today because we are hoping that wherever you're starting from, that many if not most of you are interested in becoming teachers, licensed teachers, and should you do that, we need you and want you and have a place for you at the DOE. Um, on the one hand, this is a tremendously exciting time for the DOE. Um, we have the governor's um, blueprint vision for Hawaii education. We have a new strategic plan that is really helping us focus our sights on what we can do and need to do to, to support and educate effectively every single one of our students in the Hawaii Department of Education. But on the, same, on the other hand, it's a challenging time for the DOE. I mean, we have this long-standing teacher shortage. It is time to take care of that. It is time to get to the point where we have a quality teacher for every single student in our schools on every single island and in every single location on every single island. That is a great challenge and we are so gratified that we have partners stepping up everywhere throughout the state. This is just an example of that. We have legislators, we have other, you know, whether it's the parents, community groups, you know, the, the, the private groups. It is going to take all of us to get to the point where we need to be. Um, I noticed that what I'm actually supposed to be speaking about, very briefly, <laughs> is why it's great to be a teacher you know, for the Department of Education. And, and I think that the answer should be obvious to, to all of us. We all value public education very much. And in addition to the pleasures of being a teacher, you know, that's what you want to do, the, the normal pleasures, the career opportunities, all of that. But I can tell you from personal experience that when we do what we do in the context of public education, there is a reward that is there that you cannot discount. It is a, a game changer, it is life changing. It makes a very, very big difference. Um, and that is why we would love to see, as I said, every one of you, you know, coming through the doors of the schools or whatever other role at the Department of Education. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for considering us and, and careers with us. As I was walking around a little bit before we started, I do hear people asking questions at various points about what it takes, some of the, the specifics, the mechanics. Um, where's my group? We've got a group here today from, from my office, the Office of Human Resources at the DOE. Please feel free to ask us any questions you have, and we are committed to helping you the best we can so that we can help you be the teachers for us. So thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Hi, my name is Robert Landau. I'm the executive director for the Hawaii Associ Association for Independent Schools. And we work with over 90 schools on uh, all of the islands here in Hawaii. But I'm supposed to speak about why it's great to be a private school teacher, but I'm going to go off script a little bit. <laughs> the reason is, is because uh, we have 100% of our kids in this state go to public, private, and charter schools. That makes up all of the kids. Uh, there are also kids who are homeschooled, but they follow... Uh, a really good curriculum. So it's about kids. It's about fulfilling the dreams and the hopes and aspirations for all of our children, no matter where they go to school. We need teachers in every school. There's a shortage of teachers, public, private, and charter. I too am a great advocate and have great admiration for the governor's blueprint for education. It is what children need for the 21st century. So this is not today about why it's great to be a teacher in an individual school. You guys pick the school that best matches the mission and vision of that school, the right fit for you as a teacher. It might be a public school, it might be a private school, it might be some of our amazing charter schools, our Hawaiian culture-based charter schools that we have here. So the bottom line is, be a teacher. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Uh, it is a, a wonderful profession. I have spent the last 40 years of my life uh, in education. I'm an older guy, so I can tell you, I went to a lab school as a, as a child, public school, uh, junior high and high school, 
public uh, state of California university. You know, I'm standing here today with a public education. And then I spent the last 40 years overseas in international schools. Rich schools, poor schools, local schools, American schools, British schools, it doesn't matter. I work with some of the most amazing educators that you've ever seen, and they have made an impact on kids. And our kids now that have been through our schools, public, private, and charter, are doing amazing things, and they need you. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for not just considering the profession, but just do it, because there's always going to be kids, and you'll always have a job. So thank you very much for everything. So we are going to enjoy watching a short video, and we'll get started with our panel. Hello, my name is Dr. Pam Rogeman, and I'm the Academic Dean for the College of Education here at the University of Phoenix. I can honestly say that one of my favorite jobs ever was being a high school English teacher for 17 years. Teachers dedicate their lives to shaping and leading children and adults on their education journey. It takes a passionate person to pursue a career in education. The following teachers have been recognized for their excellence in teaching. They are current and past state teachers of the year. Listen to what they have to say about finding their place in the classroom and their pursuit of a career in education. I love being a teacher for so many reasons. I get the opportunity every day to have something new happen in my room. My adventure begins every day at 8 a.m. We go to the Galapagos Islands where we're talking about Charles Darwin, and then at 9 we're back to chemistry and we're watching a Steve Spangler video and shooting up elephant toothpaste. I look at, at education as being this adventure. I want kids to jump on my train and go on this adventure with me. The biggest and most rewarding time are those small accomplishments my students make. It's that moment of learning that you can't describe. And it's at those times, as an educator, you, there is a lot of rhetoric surrounding the profession. That, that little accomplishment by that child just evaporates all that rhetoric. You should pursue something that you're passionate about. And if you're passionate about helping and serving others, teaching is the single most important human endeavor, and we'd love you to be a part of that. And now we will hear from our local fabulous panel of award-winning teachers. <coughs> Hi, good morning everyone. My name is Stephanie Mew. I'm a teacher at Kapunahala Elementary and I'm the 2016 Hawaii State Teacher of the Year. <laughs> when I was young, I, I never wanted to be a teacher. It never occurred to me. You know, and it wasn't someone like I had a teacher in front of me. But I want to tell you what, what touched my heart that motivated me to be in this place that I am now. So I was a social worker, and I was a social worker, social worker for high-risk youth. We did counseling groups for gang youth and things like that. And after three years of that, that was really, it was really painful to see kids at that place. And I thought, what could I do? Where could I be so they, to prevent that from happening? And teaching came to me. <laughs> but there was something that I read about a teacher that just drew me in, and it said, teaching is the noblest profession. I said, oh, wow, really? You know, and I continued reading an ancient idea of what teaching was about, and it's even a modern idea, to draw out, educare, educare, to get whatever is inherently in and insist the kids in drawing their talents out. So I went on this journey, and I spent two years um, living at a boarding school in Thailand. And I spoke English, they spoke Thai, and I was there specifically to study character education. <coughs> and because that was, there was a language barrier, it really was the silent teaching. I had to understand the values or the character, and I had to live it. And that's how it got communicated to them, because I couldn't teach it to them through words. And two years of living with these children, teaching them conversational English and learning about character education or human values, and also teaching them that, but only through living it, then I decided I would like to return home. 
you know, where I can speak my own language. And I wasn't a teacher at that time. I was a social worker. So I returned home and I went to Shabanag University. And it was a perfect fit for me because it had a Montessori emphasis. And that emphasis matched who I was about the whole child, the global child, you know, looking at the world as a universe. So I went through there and I wanted to go into the public school system and also I was a Montessori teacher and I got to practice that. And when I became a public school teacher, it was a great joy for me. And why I teach today is because when I draw out, when I assist, I can identify, I can help the kids identify who they are and I can point it out for them and I can give it a name. Look at that talent you have. And then I can give them the strategies and I can give them things that they help them overcome whatever obstacles they have and then see that spark in their eye and that standing up a little bit taller. That is why I teach. And for me, I became a better person because I had to practice the values, the mindsets, the character that I wanted to give to my students. If I didn't do it, then they wouldn't learn it. And so every day I have to wake up and decide to be the best that I can be because that's what I'm asking them to do. And then I, I saw myself changing because they're so quick to point it out. Oh, look, this you know, <laughs> things like that. They are your best measurement. But the excitement of seeing a child, I teach third grade at eight years old, adopt a mindset like, hey, when I struggle, my brain is working, and to carry that one little seed forever, and to hear the, them have a conversation on the side, hey, don't worry, you're struggling, that means your brain's working then I know, wow, wow. So being the teacher of the year, I realize, I've come to understand that it is, we have content, content is easily accessible now via our mobile devices and our digital world. What we are now doing as teachers is teaching the kids how to find themselves, give them strategies, how to think, how to survive, how to enjoy this 21st century world. And it's an awesome feeling. And I get to, whatever I see going on in the adult world that looks fun, like Google and Facebook and how they're doing it, I want to bring it into my classroom. You know, why not, right? So we've gone from that factory model sitting in rows to just moving everywhere, inside, outside of the classroom. And every day is fun. And as a teacher, I get to be an artisan and a therapist. And I get to create something every single day for them, we create it together, and we can spot it. They'll say something, and we are, the teacher can say, yes, and did you know this? And making that connection for them, for their little eight-year-old minds, someplace way beyond that they could go. So being a teacher for me is the best job. It's not even a job, it's who I am. It's a vocation, it's a mission, and I, when I talk to all the teachers who are just doing incredible work, they do not see it as a job. It is who we are. Thank you. I'm gonna stay seated if that's okay. I'll speak nice and loud. Um, first of all, is that okay? Can I come back here? Yes, <laughs> Thank you, all right, that's better. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you for inviting me today to this wonderful event. Um, my name is Kelly Sutcliffe, and I'm currently a fourth grade teacher at Thomas Jefferson Elementary School in Waikiki. A little background on me, I grew up on the East Coast in New Jersey, where I attended elementary school, high school, and college. And as far as I can remember, I always wanted to be a teacher, probably because that's all that I knew. I loved school, and I adored my teachers. They were role models for me and always pushed me to work hard and help me find strengths in myself that I didn't know existed. When I graduated high school and I started at the College of New Jersey, I discovered that there were hundreds of other things uh, I could study. I felt as though I owed it to myself to explore these other career paths I was interested in. I started out with no major and then I switched to engineering didn't last too long. Uh, then I considered switching schools and moving to California to study film. Um, I studied math for a brief stint, 
but none of these really spoke to me like the passion I had for education. And so I decided to continue on that path. When I graduated college, I got hired by the Hawaii Department of Education. I got on a plane and I moved 5,000 miles away from home where I didn't know anyone or anything about the schools here. It was quite a culture shock at first, but it has turned out to be the best decision that I have ever made. My first job was, a, was as a sixth grade teacher at Kahala Elementary School. This was about 10 years ago. There was no curriculum. I had 36 students and at least eight of them were special needs. I was in tears by October and I wanted to move back home. <laughs> uh, it was extremely challenging, but I stuck with it and I had a great mentor that helped me survive that first year. Before I knew it, it was May and I was crying for a different reason. I was crying because I had formed such a strong bond and connection with those students and I was truly going to miss them. I felt as though I had actually made a difference in their lives. In fact, it inspired me to reach out to all of my former teachers that had encouraged me and made a positive impact in my life and thank them. Every year after that got better and easier. I've since taught grades K, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I've taken on plenty of extracurricular activities such as tutoring, running clubs, science fair, and even brought students out our island for a field trip. I started to realize that the possibilities were endless, and so I started putting them into action at my school. <clears throat> this past year, I was honored to receive a Milken Educator Award, which was a highlight in my career. It was wonderful to be recognized for all of my hard work, but the best part was the outpouring messages and emails I received from coworkers, professors, and especially former students. I had one student in particular from my very first class send me an email. First, apologizing for all the trouble he had given me. <laughs> and second, thanking me for believing in him and not giving up. He went on to explain how well he was doing and that he was working at a computer software company. I felt extremely proud. One of my favorite things about being a teacher in Hawaii is the sense of family and culture that you don't seem to get anywhere else. In my class, I do not have a minority or majority. Just about every student is unique and from somewhere different in the world, and yet they all come together to work towards a common goal and help one another succeed. It is the true definition of Ohana and a wonderful representation of how the world should be. As a teacher, I have the ability to make a direct impact on a child every single day. Sometimes it's not always educationally. Some days they might need you to just be a, to be a counselor, a coach, a nurse, a mom, or some days even just a friend. You are so much more than just their teacher. As a teacher, you have the power to educate, innovate, challenge, and engage young minds that will ultimately be our future. Teaching students to persevere and watching them achieve their goals and solve real world problems is priceless to me. And like with every job you encounter, teacher has its, teaching has its fair share of ups and downs, and there will be days that are tough, but I can guarantee there is no other job that will leave you feeling so fulfilled at the end of the day. It truly is great to be a teacher, especially in Hawaii. Thank you. Aloha mai kako, o kai manana koa, he kumu kai apuni vau, ma ki kola kai apuni o nā nā pui. O ia kapapahana o lela Hawaii, ma ki ia pai aina mo o Hawaii nei. Um, ua lila wau i kumu, ma muli o ko o aloha i nā keiki, ka hoa nā o wau Hawaii, a me ka o lela Hawaii ki kahi. Ma muli o ke la mame e kolu, ua lila wau i kumu, i ki ke ao ako hoa mau, ke kule ana o ka o lela Hawaii. Ua au mau, um, I'm a Hawaiian language immersion program teacher at Kikula Kayopuni on the Nanakuli Elementary School campus. Um, I became a teacher because I love Hawaiian. I love all things Hawaiian, culture, language. I love my keiki, um, and I love education. Um, I truly feel that education and knowledge is one of the things that cannot be taken away from you. 
You can be the richest person with all kind of money, all kind of cars, and everything like that, but all that can be taken away real quick. Whereas education and knowledge that you gain when you're growing up, when you're in school, that cannot be taken away from you. And it's because I value that, and my family value that, and they instilled it in me. I continue that. Um, they have an O-level in Hawaii, um, in Hawaiian. Hawaii. It's Nawai Ho'i ka ole o ke aku mai he ala hele i ma'i ka hele i ai o uma makua. Who am I to uh, deny the ala hele, the path that was already laid before me by my kupuna? Um, my grandfather came from Samoa. Um, he spoke three languages, Samoan, English, and um, German. And he instilled in me and my cousins to don't rely on like calculators. You figure it out. You realize no one why you have to like multiply and add and things like that. Um, it's because of my kupuna Hawaii, my Hawaiian grandparents that instilled culture and values um, from the Hawaiian culture and just being Hawaiian. And it's truly a uh, I get my olela Hawaii, my Hawaiian language from my kupuna Saranakoa. Um, she helped to uh, help the Hawaiian language thrive in a time that Hawaiian language wasn't spoken. Um, kind of like now, uh, you go to the airport, you hear Hawaiian language. Um, you go to the high school, high school classrooms or high school classrooms, and you, you hear Hawaiian, but you go outside, and everyone's speaking English. But over 100 years ago, everyone was speaking Hawaiian. So it, it's kind of my kuleana, my responsibility as a Kanaka Hawaii to awamo and take on that kuleana and the responsibility to ho'omau ko'ole Hawaii to continue the Hawaiian language and to continue Hawaiian education. Um, I realized teaching in a highly uh, populated Hawaiian community that we have to connect things to them that they're familiar with. And it's my responsibility to make that connection for them so they are ready and able to move forward. Um, I went to school um, at UH Mono. I graduated with my bachelor's in Hawaiian language. Um, funny thing, right there graduation, when I went to go um, pick up my lei po'o, my haku for um, graduation, the guy's like, oh, are you going to do what's your, what's, your, uh, what's your bachelor's degree? I'm like, oh, I don't know, that's a good question. He's like, oh, what are you going to do? You going to uh, work for Hawaii? And I'm like, so I graduated with Hawaiian language and I got to work for Hawaiian Air. I don't think so. It's a great profession, right? You benefit. Um, but I realized that it, it's probably my kuleana, my responsibility to come into the classroom um, because I learned the language. There's a bunch of keiki in Hawaii that need good teachers that are fluent in Hawaiian. So pai pai vaui na kanaka Hawaii, kanaka olela Hawaii. E lilo i kumu, i hiki ke kokua mai, i hiki ia papahana o kaho o mau ana ka olela Hawaii. Um, I truly highly <coughs> encourage any Hawaiian language speakers um, that are out there to continue your education. Um, I went to Shamanad University, a little shout out to them. Um, uh, it was an awesome opportunity because uh, I was hired as an emergency hire um, because I spoke Hawaiian and there wasn't a lot of Hawaiian language teachers. So I went to school to get my master's and to get certificated at the same time as teaching. And what was awesome about that was the things I learned in college and class, in, in my uh, master's classes. I got to um, actually do it in class and get like real time data and, and learn from the things that are being put forth from education and all the pedagogy and see how it, I can actually use that, kind of tweak it to uh, Make it kupona and uh, very fitting for my keiki. Um, so, mahalo nui roya o kopa kahino kahele anamai. Thank you for inviting me and mahalo. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Stacy Overton. I'm a fifth grade teacher at Holy Nativity School in Aina Haina. And my goal today uh, is to be here with you and be as real and open as possible. So I'm really excited for our Q&A sessions um, because I want to know what you want to know. I'll go ahead and just tell you a little bit about myself and why I love teaching and why I picked Hawaii uh, to be the place that I do that. So I was born in Colorado. Um, I grew up playing outside in the Rocky Mountains with sticks and stones and my little brother who followed me everywhere. Um, and then I moved to Iowa when I was in first grade. Um, 
where I ended up playing outside still, but this time it was not mountains, cornfields instead. Um, and then in 2006, I moved here. Um, I took a job with the school that I'm at now. Um, it's very much my home and my family. I feel very blessed and thankful um, that things happened the way that they did and that I'm here today. Um, one of my favorite <laughs> educational mentors um, is a man named Dr. Robert Peters, and he's never actually been my direct um, teacher in any way, but I've had a lot of things um, that I've experienced with him, and he really speaks to my heart. One of the things that, that he says a lot is that children are always asking themselves three questions. And those three questions are, who am I? What's this world about? And what's my role in it? And I love those three questions. And they always stick with me. Because I think it's so true. It's so accurate. <clears throat> and it's not just children. It's everyone. It's everyone with a soul. Everyone that's human. <laughs> um, which is part of the reason that I'm so excited to be here today. Um, because you know those are questions that we all ask ourselves, whether it's something we're aware of or not, um, in the choices we make, in the everyday small decisions, big decisions. You know, it's a reflection of who you're choosing to be. So when I ask myself that question, and I ask it a lot, very directly to myself. <laughs> You know, I, I have a lot of answers, and I have a lot of questions, and it's hard um, to put it in just a few words, because I'm a lot of things. Um, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a wife, I'm a stepmother, um, I'm a person who's failed many times, I'm a person who's succeeded many times. Um, I'm a surfer, I'm a painter, um, I love arts in all different kinds of ways. I love nature. I'm a teacher. And oftentimes I think we define ourselves so much by what our career is. I mean, you hear people asking all the time, what do you do? And rarely do you hear people explain you know, their hobbies or their interests or the things that they think you know, are really what make them excited. But the cool thing about being a teacher is that it's about growing and developing the people. And so, you know, when I think about all the things that I am, and I come back to that question, what's my role? I find myself wanting to have a sense of purpose that's really deep and meaningful. And while you know, there are a lot of activities and things that, that bring me joy, I always end up with the same answer, that life is about people, it's about relationships, it's about connections, uh, it's about lifting each other up. And I will get emotional, I, I will kind of try not to, but you know, it's what life's about. And so I have no greater calling in my heart than to be a teacher. And I love teaching in Hawaii because I still get to do all these activities that I love. <laughs> I have time to go surfing. I can go hiking. I can go diving. I can find shells and make jewelry and paint and sew bikinis after 3.30. <laughs> And uh, you know, all those things are part of who I am. And it's so beautiful for me to spend my day in a classroom with souls that are just starting to open up. And to let them see that everything about them is important and is special. And so when I come back to those three questions, who am I? 
you know, what is this world about? What's my role? And actually, the questions for me as an adult, you know, they kind of change. And I, I often ask myself, what does the world um, need more of? And I ask this to my students a lot, and, and they actually um, oftentimes surprise a lot of people and a lot of adults with their insight and the depth that they have. Um, they're working on a project right now. Um, and I can't really summarize it well for you, so I'll just tell you. It's about helping um, the homeless uh, in our community. And they're doing some really neat things. Um, you know, and it matters. So it's, it's such a joy for me to be able to help pose that question to other uh, minds that are, that are curious and excited about life. You know, what does the world need more of? And who are you? And what's, what's your role? What are you going to do about it? So I encourage you to um, chat with me, talk story, ask me all kinds of questions later. Um, I'm really happy and excited to be here with you today. So thanks for letting me give you my intro. And I'll pass on the mic. Aloha. Uh, my name is Kay Beach, and uh, I'm currently a middle school teacher, 6th through 8th grade at Seeks Public Charter School. Um, and I'm very happy to be here today. Um, a little nervous. <laughs> um, prior, to, prior to being a teacher at Seeks, I started out my teaching um, journey um, on the Lieber Coast at Waianae High School in special education. And I think. Um, Spending time in the early teaching years at a school that, um, at a very large school with a very, many complex layers, um, allowed me to really take a step back and view teaching as something more than a profession. And that's something we've heard from all the panelists today. And I think um, those first couple of years where you're trying to figure out whether this, this thing called being a teacher is the thing for you. Um, it's a really tough time because you have a lot of things that are happening in the classroom, in your school, with your administration, in the community that you live in, and uh, a lot of times it's hard to take that step back and ask yourself, what is the purpose? Why are you doing this? And teaching is sometimes, uh, we refer to teaching as this sort of um, profession that all teachers understand teaching in the same way. And I think over the last couple of years, what I've realized is that as a teacher, you have the power to define a very specific path, how you see yourself, what kind of teacher are you? And so although I work in a school right now with only about 20 teachers, every single teacher in that school brings a different experience and a different uh, journey that they've been on that's brought them to becoming a teacher. And through that, they're able to bring something different to every kid and to every classroom. And so more recently, my passion has been in uplifting and promoting and better understanding um, the student experience in the classroom, specifically through project-based learning, inquiry-based learning, and just bringing a creative spirit to the classroom as a teacher. And through that, I recognize that when we start to view teaching as something, as our, our role as a teacher is less of a teacher and more of a facilitator or a guide, then we start to recognize kids connecting to their learning in a different way. And so prior to becoming a teacher, I think about how I even ended up here. And if you imagine life as many, many crossroads, some people have more crossroads than others. Um, some people have more um, obstacles that are maybe blocking those choices that they can make at those crossroads. The teachers in my life were not necessarily teachers that stood at the front of a classroom. They were people that were standing at the crossroads helping to guide me in a direction that was going to help me to continue to understand my role in the world. And so that's how I try to view my role as a teacher and my interactions with students is how can I guide you to actually make those choices for yourself? How can I give you the experiences and the opportunities and the fun around being a human in this world and let you make the choice about who you are and 
your understanding of the world around you. And so um, I guess that's, that's, my, that's my mantra as a teacher, is how do we continue to push ourselves as, as adults and continue to learn and realize that there's so many ways that we can teach successfully and there's so many ways that kids can end up being successful. It doesn't have to necessarily be by the book. And um, if we can continue to push ourselves as individuals and realize that every single teacher is going to come to the classroom with something different to offer, and every kid is going to come to the classroom with something different to offer, and then we start to break down the barriers of how we use traditional schooling today. So I'll leave, I'll leave you with this. Um, there's a, currently there's an art exhibit at the MoMA in New York, and I came across that I was listening to NPR a couple months ago, and I, it's one of those things you hear and you can't let go of. Um, there is an art exhibit of a surrealist artist from a couple, hundred, uh, couple centuries ago, and the art exhibit is called, um, it's a quote, and it is based on a painting. I want you to imagine, first imagine the painting. The painting is um, very surrealist humans with very round heads. So imagine very round, large heads. And the quote is, um, our heads are round, so our thoughts can move around. And it has nothing to do with teaching, but to me it had everything to do with teaching because I think we need to start viewing the world as round and the, the classroom walls as round and our students' minds as round because that allows us to break down those barriers, think outside of the box, and give them an experience versus just um, a traditional education. So thank you. You don't have to forgive me if I break out in song, because the only other times I ever have a microphone in my hand, I'm usually at Karaoke Hut, and I have a Heineken in my other hand, <laughs> singing Dr. Dre or Pearl Jam or something. Um, in all seriousness, though, if not me, then who? If not me, then who? I'm Dr. Chad Miller. I am the 2012 Vice State Teacher of the Year. I'm a current professor at UH Minoas Institute for Teacher Education, uh, where I work with philosophy for children. I'm going to get to that here in a second. But the reason why I bring up that question is, in order for me to answer the question why I teach, I have to go back 2,500 years to Socrates. <laughs> and Socrates, um, if you guys know his story, he was brought up on charges by the Athenian government for corrupting the youth of Athens. And what he would do is he would walk around on the streets as a 73-year-old man and ask people questions about things that he wondered about. What happens to us after we die? What lies beyond those heavens? What does it mean to be a good person? And he'd engage young people in these conversations. Essentially, he was trying to get people to think for themselves. The government didn't want people to think for themselves, so they arrested him. And they said, you can't do this anymore. And he just decided to defend himself. He didn't hire an attorney, he was going to defend himself at his trial. And essentially, he stood up, and he has this long quote, but if we paraphrase it, he says, the unexamined life is not worth living. If I can't go around and engage people and think about things that matter to me, then what's the point of living? And the reason why I bring that up is because when I think to my own K-12 schooling experience, after second, second grade, I don't think that my schooling was worthwhile. I don't think we didn't examine things that mattered to me. I got exams on things that were allegedly important, but I wasn't given the opportunity, the skills, or the tools to examine life, to use schooling in a meaningful way with my peers to hear perspectives that were different than my own. And I bring that up because I was searching for something more. And luckily I could tackle people really well. And I got to go to a Jesuit <laughs> university to play football. And there, I think I was saved. We were really good at football. And I don't know, I don't know why I went there besides I thought I was going to play quickly and I had got to wear a single digit. That was really important for me. But when I went there, we had to take philosophy classes. And here in those philosophy classes, I actually learned what learning was like. We sat in a circle, we got to know each other, we read things that mattered, and we asked questions. Everything was about our questions. It wasn't just about memorizing what Kant said. It was about using what those philosophers had written about, the things that I was actually wondering about, and talking about it with other people. And it impressed me so much I became a philosophy major. And in the course of that major, I realized that, to quote Zach De La Rocha from Rage Against the Machine, something must be done. <laughs> something must be done. And my, 
what I realized was that no child should have my K-12 schooling experience. It shouldn't be something that is done to them, it should be something they're actively doing. So what I did is at the time I was actually reading a lot of revolutionary philosophy. Um, Ernesto Guevara, who's an Argentinian philosopher, wrote that uh, the duty of every revolutionary is to make the revolution. If we want to see something in the world change, you be the change. So what I did was I decided I was going to become a teacher. And I dedicated my entire adult life to making a more mindful, a more thoughtful, and a more compassionate society by bringing the activity of philosophy into our schools. So those schools, so our, our public school children don't have the same public school experience as I did. That they're sitting in circles, they're learning from each other about the things that matter, we're teaching them how to ask the good questions, and most importantly, how to listen to each other. I mean, when we look around at our current state of affairs, people don't know how to listen. They don't know how to listen to people who have a different mindset than themselves, and they certainly don't know how to express their ideas clearly to somebody else. So there's no time than the present that the world needs us. They need us to help make a more mindful, thoughtful, and compassionate society. And those are the things that get me up out of bed every single day to work with kindergarten through graduate school students to help our world be a more thoughtful place that I would want to raise my own children in. I don't have any children yet, but I'm hoping to raise them in a world where thoughtfulness and mindfulness are just part of our schooling experience. So I want to leave you with that quote, the duty of every revolutionary is to make the revolution, and if not you, then who? Thank you very much.